For 85 years, the refrigerants business within Comores has worked with the HVACR industry, leveraging our science heritage to provide sustainable solutions that enhance personal comfort, enable food preservation, improve industrial processing, and reduce the environmental footprint of our products. This work continues today during the final years of the phase out of HCFC 22 in the United States. Now, more than ever, it's vitally important for equipment owners, as well as service technicians, to develop a refrigerant management plan and focus on activities such as leak reduction, refrigerant reclaim, and converting existing systems to operate on non-ozone depleting refrigerants. This brief video is intended to show a properly certified and trained contractor, step by step, how quick and easy it is to convert an air conditioning system from R22 to Freon MO99 refrigerant following the Comores guidelines. Freon MO99, or R438A, is the world's most versatile alternative to R22. With a proven track record in hundreds of thousands of successful system conversions, that continue to operate successfully year after year. Now, let's see how easy it is to retrofit from R22 to Freon MO99 following the eight easy steps guideline. Step one, consult the detailed MO99 retrofit guidelines. The guide is available at freon.com where you can also find pressure temperature charts, case histories, and other useful information. Before you get started, be sure you read, understand, and follow all the information in the guidelines, especially the information on safety and personal protective equipment. Step 2. Establish baseline performance of the R22 system. You can use the data sheets in the retrofit guide to record information on the system's pressures, temperatures, superheat, etc. This is also a good time to check for any leaks or note any other repairs the system needs prior to converting. Step 3. Recover the R22. Using the proper recovery equipment, remove the R22 charge from the system into the appropriate recovery cylinder. You will need to pull down to 10 to 15 inches of mercury, being careful not to vent to the atmosphere. Record the weight of the refrigerant removed. This R22 is a valuable asset. It can be used to service other systems belonging to the same equipment owner or reclaimed to an authorized reclaim company. You can find more information on refrigerant reclaim at the Comores website. Step four, replace the filter dryer. Break the vacuum, cut out the existing dryer, and then braze in a new one. Use the same type of filter dryer as in the original R22 system. The new filter dryer will remove any moisture introduced into the system while it was open to the atmosphere. Step five, replace Schrader core valve seals. Replacing the pins and caps found on the service valves located on the suction and discharge lines can help prevent leaks. These, and any other elastomeric seals in the system, may have aged during years of R22 service and should be replaced with new ones. You should use an identical replacement part, just one that has not been previously exposed to R22. Step 6. Evacuate the system. Close the system and pull vacuum typically down to 500 to 1,000 microns in order to remove moisture and air. If the system cannot hold vacuum, identify any leaks and repair prior to evacuating again. Step seven, charge the system with Freon MO99. The MO99 jug should be inverted so that liquid is removed from the cylinder. The initial charge should be about 85 to 90% of the standard R22 charge. Do not charge liquid refrigerant directly into the compressor as this could cause serious damage. Start up the system, allow it to stabilize, then adjust the refrigerant charge as follows. If the system has a capillary tube expansion device, adjust the charge to achieve the same superheat temperature as the original R22 system. If the system has a TXV expansion device, adjust to achieve the same subcooled temperature as R22. The final charge will be about 95% of the R22 charge. By the way, if you haven't downloaded our free Comores PT Calculator smartphone app yet, you should. It can make this part of the job even easier. Step eight, label the system. After a final leak check, clearly label the system with one of the Freon MO99 stickers, which come free of charge attached to the cylinder box, and you're done. Now that we've seen how quick the switch to MO999 is following the eight easy steps, 
Let's hear from some contractors as they discuss their experiences during an MO99 conversion. So instead of replacing the unit, which would, cost, would be very costly to the company, we decided to go ahead and retrofit it with MO99. It's going to retrofit on this unit. Uh, we already recovered all the R22 out of the system, and we're going to start adding the MO99. It's been on the vacuum overnight, so. And we've got a unit on uh, 21, and they've been running for probably two years now. With the refrigerator and haven't had any problems. I think what they like to do here is keep a common, common refrigerant, you know, throughout the buildings. So instead of having a bunch of different, you know, units with different refrigerants, it's nice to have uh, this in all of them. Now we're putting this in as a liquid because it's been evacuated and uh, it should go in pretty easy this way. It will save time of actually charging the system through vapor or whatnot that way. Uh, if we were going to retrofit this unit with 407C, we would have to cut both compressors out, lift the compressors off and uh, drain all the oil out. So that's, that's, that's a big plus. Yeah, with the 407C, I mean, you're talking the other, the other units were two stage, so now you have to recover two stages. Now you have to, you know, cut both compressors out. This one here, it, it, being how it's a tandem, a little bit easier, but those are big compressors. I don't want to have to lift them off all the time. I'm probably getting close to firing this thing up. Okay. So I'm going to grab the other cylinder. How about if I get in and get that and we turn that on and let this start to sequence? That's as well. what I was going to Because we're, gonna, we're getting close to checking our, you know, sub All right. I'm gonna fire this guy up. Well, we're fine-tuning it now, just just taking some some readings every every so often. We got, like I said, we we're up to almost uh, eight to ten degrees subcooling, so we got you know another ten degrees, a few more pounds, and it ought to be it ought to be running good. We're all finished up with uh, adding the refrigerant, and um, at the end we ended up with the readings we were looking for. We have a 20 degree subcooling, and our superheat, being how it's a long line set, it's um, it's also 20 degrees up here. So that's what we were looking for, and that's what we uh, ended up with. If you didn't know the color of that cylinder, it's the same stuff. You know, you just you just have to look at your PT chart, just like you would with any refrigerant. And, the transition of the HVAC industry away from R22 can create many questions. Camours is here to help. We have a team of world-class engineers and detailed technical information to assist your business and your customers navigate any challenges you may face. Talk to your local Camours wholesaler, call us directly, or visit our website, freon.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out our other videos and please follow us on Twitter for the latest news on refrigerants.